Hi and welcome to episode number 10 about the Yocto project and open embedded on Raspberry Pi 5. In this episode I'm going to show you how to enable serial peripheral interface and how to use it from a Python script. As you know from the previous episodes I'm using a built machine with Ubuntu 24.04 on which I'm cross compiling an image that I'm running on Raspberry Pi 5. I'm still using the same setup that I've started in episode 1. I initialize the build environment and after that using Vim, my favorite text editor, I opened conf slash loco.conf. You can see the leftovers from the previous episodes, all configurations are still there. At the end of the file I'm going to add enable underscore spi underscore bus equals to 1. As the name of the variable suggests, this way I'm going to enable spy in my new image. For the demonstration that I have in mind, I'll also add to the image the python 3 spi dev package. You're already familiar with the image underscore install variable and the append syntax, I have used them in the previous episodes. After saving the changes to conf slash local.conf, I executed the bitbay command to build a new version of core image base. This new version of the image will have the spy enabled and also the python spy package which contains a python module for interfacing the spy devices from user space via the spy linux kernel driver. Although this is not a build from scratch but instead an incremental build that reuses the existing share state, it takes a while. Once Bitbay completes, I'll flash the image to a micro SD card. You know the drill from the previous episodes. Building the image is straightforward and easy. However, let me take a moment to explain you how it works. Raspberry Pi single board computers have a very specific boot sequence. There is a closed source GPU firmware that acts as the primary boot loader. It reads settings from a plain text file called config.txt. This file has an ini style of format and it's deployed on the FAT boot partition of the micro SD card. So in order to use serial peripheral interface we need the appropriate settings in config.txt. So with the variable that I've just set um, enable underscore SPI underscore bus, the source code from uh, Meta Raspberry Pi, the community maintained BSP Yocto and Open Embedded layer, ensures that through the recipe rp underscore config, the uh, bitbake will generate an appropriate config.txt file with the required settings to enable SPI. This closed source GPU firmware that acts as a primary bootloader and the config.txt file are something very specific for Raspberry Pi, no matter if you are building a Linux distribution with the Yocto project or using another Linux distribution, for example Raspberry Pi OS. Variable enable underscore SPI underscore bus is something very specific for Meta Raspberry Pi, the community maintained BSP layer for Raspberry Pi single board computers. Typically you don't have this variable in other BSP layers for other hardware supported uh, by the Yocto project and open embedded. For the demonstration in this video I want to use this capacitive soil moisture sensor. However there is a problem, this is an analog sensor and Raspberry Pi single board computers does not have any analog to digital converters. So the solution is to use an external analog to digital converter, for example microchip MCP3002 attached to the SPI bus which is available as part of the 40 pin header of a Raspberry Pi. This may sound complicated, however it can be achieved easily using an add-on board. I have designed such an open source hardware add-on board called Anavi Gardening u -Hat. The source code is, and schematics is available in GitHub. I've designed this board using KiCad, a free and open source software. So if you're curious to learn more about Anavi Gardening u -Hat, have a look at the link in the description of the video to check the schematics. 
So here we are on my desk where I have to assemble the hardware. I carefully plugged Anavi Gardening U hat to the 40 pin header of Raspberry Pi 5. Please note that the analog to digital converter as part of the printed circuit board has two channels. This means that we can attach simultaneously two capacitive soil moisture sensors. However, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a single sensor. The sensor has three wires, one for the signal, one for ground and one for the input voltage. The sensor operates at five volts. There are labels on the black printed circuit board of the capacitive soil moisture sensor. So ground goes to ground, VCC goes to the five volts on Anavik gardening micro head and A out, which stands for analog output from the capacitive soil moisture sensor goes to the signal pin on the connector on Anavi Gardening Q head. Carefully, I attach the capacitive soil moisture sensor to the first dedicated connector on Anavi Gardening Q head. After that, I've plugged in a UR to USB dongle for the serial communication. This way, I connected the Raspberry Pi 5 to my laptop. After that, I plugged the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi 5. Of course, uh, I had already flashed core image based with the enable SPI on this particular micro SD card. One more thing, I want to measure the power connection. Because of this, I'm using this USB-C dongle. If you remember, at the beginning of the video, apart from enabling the serial periphery interface, I've also added a Python package. So now, let's use the interactive Python shell and write a simple script to read the values from the allo capacitive soil moisture sensor. So here we are again on my desk. I'm running Ubuntu on my laptop and in it I opened a terminal and launched the screen command line application for serial communication. I plugged the USB-C cable to provide power to the Raspberry Pi 5 and it automatically booted. On Raspberry Pi 5, I'm running Core Image Base, which is our custom Linux distribution that I built with the Yocto project and Open Embedded on the previous steps. Unlike previous versions of Raspberry Pi, on Raspberry Pi 5, the serial communication is automatically enabled on the dedicated UART connector between the two HDMI ports. Our customized image based on Pocky, the reference distribution of the Yocto project booted successfully and I logged in as root without a password. Without further ado, I typed in Python 3 and this way I've entered the interactive Python 3 shell directly running on the Raspberry Pi 5. On the first line, I'm going to import SPI dev. After that, I'm going to create a Python 3 variable with the name SPI and initialize it with SPI dev. After that, using the open method, I'm going to connect to the specified SPI device. In our case, this is bus zero and device zero. The fourth line that I've typed in sets the maximum speed for the SPI communication in Hertz. I double checked and counted the number of zeros. By the way, the source code is available as part of the description of the video, so you can just do copy and paste. Now comes the interesting part. Using method xfer, I performed an SPI transaction. This means that I send bytes to the analog to digital converter and get back bytes from the chip. I saved the value returned from the analog to digital converter in variable ADC. And after that, I created another Python tree variable called VAL val, which converted the analog to digital converted value into an integer, which is in the range between zero and 1023. In order to get a human readable output, I'm going to type in the print Python 3 command by specifying the value from channel 0 that we read as an integer and furthermore converting it to a voltage value. The capacitive soil moisture sensor attached to Anavi gardening U hat operates at 5 volts. This is the voltage that we provide from the Raspberry Pi 5 through Anavi gardening U hat to the actual sensor. However, the analog uh, values that the sensor outputs as a result are in the range between 0 and 3.3 volts. Because of this, here in the Python source code, we are converting the integer value that we read from the analog to digital converter to a voltage within that range. If we want to read again the value coming from the capacitive soil moisture sensor, we have to execute the last three lines again. 
obviously this whole thing is not very convenient i'm doing it here just for a demonstration the proper way would be to create a python tree script uh, create a yocto and open embedded recipe in our own layer and make sure that this recipe deploys the script as part of core image base or another image that we have created for our own needs so the initial reading from the unlock to digital converter and the capacitive soil moisture sensor attached to it is 752 which is about 2.43 volts for the first test i prepared a jar full of water and a yellow cup in which i cut a hole so that i can plug the capacitive soil moisture sensor in the terminal i've executed again the python 3 commands to read the value for coming from the unlock to digital converter and this time the value is 184 and the voltage has dropped to 0 0.59 volts the water conductivity is a huge topic that i definitely don't want to go into right now i'm doing this just for a demonstration to show you how spy works on raspberry pi 5 with unlock to digital converter and this capacitive soil moisture sensor I removed the sensor from the water, executed again the Python 3 commands to read the value, and as you can see, it is uh, pretty much the same value as the initial reading that we had. This time we had uh, 732 and about 2.36 volts. For the second demonstration, I have prepared something more interesting. Here I have a plant. In the name of this open scientific experiment, this poor plant hasn't seen water for a couple of days. I plug the capacitive soil moisture sensor and the value shows 400 which is about 1.29 volts. My plant definitely deserves something better so let's make it happy and give some water to this poor plant. Although this video tutorial is about the Yocto project and open embedded, I'm demonstrating serial periphery interface and because of this I'm using analog to digital converter but the demonstration here has a very practical side the knowledge that you see here can be applied for gardening or even agriculture to complete our small experiment after watering the plant i executed again the three lines of python source code which read the value from the analog to digital converter this time as a result we have an integer value of 116 which corresponds to 0.37 volts this is a clear indication that now I have enough water in my plant. Beware, no plants and no flowers were heard during the filming of this tutorial about the Yocto project and open embedded on Raspberry Pi 5. I repeated the reading from the analog to digital converter again, this time for the last time, and it is the same value as previously, 116, which corresponds to 0.37 volts. By the way, probably if we are looking for a user-friendly solution, we should be printing out percentage, not voltage. Anyway, I'm sure that we are all here engineers, so voltage is fine for this demonstration. Finally, don't forget to close the spy communication and quit the Python interactive shell. One more thing, on Linux, spy devices shows up under slash dev slash spi dev with the bus number dot the chip select, in our case, the microchip MCP3002 shows up as slash dev slash spy dev 0.0 and 0.1 because it has two channels. Let's summarize what we did in this episode number 10 about the Yocto project and open embedded. We built new version of core image base with enabled SPI through the variable enable underscore SPI bus. After that, we added Python 3-SPI package and using it, we created a simple Python script and runtime to read values from a capacitive soil moisture sensor. Raspberry Pi 5 and all previous versions of this single board computer do not have a built-in analog to digital converter. Because of this, I used for the demonstration an open source add-on board that I've designed called Anavi Gardening you had. This add-on board provides an analog to digital converter with two channels and I used one of them to read the values from the capacitive soil moisture sensor. Peripheral devices are a very important part of any embedded Linux system. In the previous episode, number 9, we talked about I2C. And in this episode, number 10, I showed you how to use serial peripheral interface on a Raspberry Pi. Please let me know in the comments below other topics that you would like to be covered as part of these tutorials. If you like this type of content, please consider 
um, subscribing to the YouTube channel and hit the like button. Stay tuned for new videos and I hope to see you soon.